Seems to be working out fine, yeah. Took all them years and all that play in the field to find Mr. Wright, eh? Funny when you think he was the one I started off with. Yeah, don't forget to let me know if you hear anything about Mr. Jack the Lad Wicks. I've got a good thing going here. I don't want him chucking a spanner in the works. You're dead right. Tell our doll. I got your message. All right, if I come in. Luby will be in polite. Usually charging like a bull in a china shop. What's it all about, Lou? Oh, you're doing the rounds. More old scores to sell? No. Come to make me peace. Thought we'd already done that, shaking hands on it, even. Ah, that was just about Kenny. Come to make me peace for good. Leaving Walford? Retiring to the seaside, are you? None of your business. Well, making your peace, saying your goodbye so you can go with a clear conscience. Sit down. Thanks. Don't expect me to make things easy for you. You never liked me and the feeling was mutual. I ain't about to say, sorry, Lou. It weren't personal, because it bloody was. I'll never forget the way you interfered in my life. The memory's like a scar, and I don't forget things easy. I bear grudges, you know what I mean? So just say your piece. Cast your spells, mix your potions, stick your pins in me, and then get your broomstick and go. When you divorced my Pete, I was glad. Oh, I know, I kicked up a fuss saying I didn't believe in divorce. Well, I don't. But I was glad you weren't the right type for him. You weren't right for each other. You had too much life in you. You got bored easy, or you did. You was always looking for excitement round the corner. You wasn't a homemaker, which is what my Pete needed. I mean, that's what he got from his mum. We, we do everything for them, we spoil them, and then we send them out helpless into the world, hoping they'll find a... a substitute mum. I don't think you ever come under that heading. Maybe you was being personal, Pat, but I wasn't. I was just fighting for my own. I think I know why you were like you were. You found the perfect man for you right at the beginning, didn't you? Being the sort of person you are, you fell for him, up, line and sinker. Well, you've never done things by halves, have you? And he let you down, bad. You've been taking your revenge ever since on all men. Well, I think you've done enough damage over the years. You've had enough revenge to last you a lifetime. I think it's time to call all, don't you? Let bygones be bygones. I mean, uh, you're bloody old enough. You must have settled down now. I believe you found yourself a man. He looks all right to me, your type. Don't lose this one, Pat. I don't think you're gonna find another. So, you come here for my sake, not yours. Well, well, wonders will never cease. Lou Beale being polite and unselfish on the same day. I don't think I can take too much more of this without a stiff drink. When you married my Pete, at the reception, Pete made a speech, thanking me and your mum for getting the food all ready and laying the tables out all nice. Then I got a big bunch of flowers, and you gave me this brooch. I've never worn it. I, I suppose it reminded me of you. Oh, that's unkind now, come to think of it. Well, someone may as well get a use for it. You may bear grudges, Pat, but I can't. I'd like you to have it. Tell you the truth, it's too flashy for me. That's more like the Lou Beale I remember. Ta. I accept. Hmm. <laughs> I got this in the Mark House Road. It was a toss-up between this and a ruby one. This one was cheaper. Right. You're still a cow, Lou, but you're a fair one. Don't get 
being sentimental, Pat. Why change the habits of a lifetime? There's more. Wixie. Simon. What about him? You know who his father is. Of course I do. Do one decent thing in your life. Put him out of his misery. 